We all live in a Skrilla Wonderland. A Skrilla Wonderland. A Skrilla Wonderland. Come on, you palsy. Palsy, 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 palsy. Esports pools. Esports pools. In play betting is the shit. Come on, ref. That fucking contest is well out of order. Factory new life knife for first. You're having a fucking laugh, ain't you? Now, there is a bias I've noticed that tends to actually infect fans across pretty much every sport, whereby they tend to overly value being clutch, being very good at the end of games or closing out a match or being able to come back into matches. And it's not that that shouldn't be valued. Clearly it should. It's a very important quality. But they make out as though that is the ultimate end defining quality and if you have every other quality in the book but you don't have that then someone who has it beats you automatically somehow and as a result sometimes they overvalue players who just have mainly that quality but especially in superstars if the superstar has that they automatically win sometimes before we've analyzed the other actions and now funnily enough sure i can see where this comes from i can see why it's so appealing comes from players like Michael Jordan, won every NBA Finals. He was an amazing at hitting the last second buzzer beater. Amazing in the last four minutes of a game. Famously would take over the fourth quarter, would sometimes chill in the first three, then take over as needed in the fourth. Tom Brady made, what is it, eight Super Bowls or something now? He's won five rings. Absolutely unbelievable player in Super Bowl-type scenarios. Obviously very, very good at comebacks, as we saw in the last Super Bowl. Larry Bird, one of the best clutch shooters of all time. Also one of the greatest small forwards to ever play the game. Joe Montana, amazing quarterback, won so many finals, every final that he was in, in fact. Now, the thing is, these players aren't just clutch. So actually, the bias is unfair even in that example. They're truly great players and they're clutch. So they've got both. I mean, stop and consider, there are very clutch players who didn't get to that status or aren't considered better than players who aren't as clutch. So Reggie Miller is a fantastic clutch player. He has so many memorable shots. He was really good at better in playoffs than he was in regular seasons, quite frankly. And he is nowhere near the level of greatness of a Carl Malone, a guy who actually tended to break down later. He went on the playoffs, never won a championship. Likewise, he's not as good as Charles Barkley, incredibly dominant player, but no, made one NBA finals, never won a championship. You know, Reggie Miller has comparable accomplishments to some of these guys, but he's not as good. They're also guys who never won. That doesn't somehow put Reggie over them. Likewise, in, in, if you want to get a great example in the NFL, is Eli Manning is by no strep, by absolutely no metric, ever been the best quarterback in the NFL. He will not be remembered as one of the great quarterbacks. He's won two Super Bowls, and in those Super Bowls themselves, he was good, and he certainly pulled off some great moves. But you know what? His brother, Peyton Manning, even though he, up until that, the two seasons ago, wouldn't have ended with more Super Bowl rings, now has the same amount, is significantly greater player because he's a truly great player, whereas Eli Manning's just a good, at times above average player. So here's the thing. If a player is already a great player with great skill and he is clutch too, sure, that is another factor. It's another metric by which we can evaluate him and potentially could elevate him even higher. So it's adding a strength to other strengths. But being clutch in itself is in no sense a requirement for being a great player. There were actually a lot of great players in Counter-Strike history who were amazing players, and these are some of the best players you'll ever see. And you know what? They're not the most clutch players of their day. They're not even close to the most clutch players of all time. So a player who actually is a legitimate candidate for best Counter-Strike player ever is the player Forrest from NIP. Now, if you look over his whole career and you look in big matches and you look in huge moments... He's actually not that great a clutch round player in the traditional Counter-Strike sense of being the guy in the 1vx situation who closes out that round. He's not actually that super sick late in games. He's lost a lot of really key overtime games, especially in 1.6. He's lost most of the finals he was in, quite frankly, even when favoured. Still one of the truly greatest players I've ever seen play. There were many more clutch players who wouldn't even make this list. Likewise, Trace from MTW, really, really solid player. Very, very consistent. Not the greatest clutch player. Frod, probably the best AWPer. He's definitely up there with Kogu. You can have that discussion. Markolov wasn't particularly known as some unreal clutch player online. Kenny S in CSGO. I think he's outrageously good as a player. But you know what? I, I usually see him getting the kills early in the round. Or I see him getting kills in a fashion that's not really typically what you'd call clutch necessarily. And certainly very emotional player, very confidence-driven player. He can lose his confidence late in games. Guardian. I don't think Guardian's a super clutch player, really. He's an amazing player. He can do everything but clutch, pretty much. No, not particularly known for amazing 1vx scenarios. But you know what? 
It didn't matter for any of these players because every single one of them had a player on their team who could do it for them. Forrest had get right. Zonic was Trace's guy who used to win all the clutches. Frod had Sunman, a guy actually who by the end, by Frod was playing with his individual skills had decayed massively. He's no longer a star player. Unreal clutch player, very good in difficult situations. Kenny S, he's had NBK most of his career. A guy who was outrageously good at clutching. Maybe fall off a little bit in recent times. Still a very smart player though. Guardian, okay, probably the most underrated one. Guardian had seized. Seized was actually pretty baller when he was in clutches. Really stable player when he was at his peak. Obviously not towards the end. So as I outlined, this is just one criterion that makes up your overall set of criteria for what makes a great player, how we evaluate a good player. It's just one factor. It's not the only factor, and it's certainly not the most important factor. Now, I get it that due to the fact it's so aesthetically satisfying to see someone close that round, and then you feel like they won that round, even though actually a lot of things might happen before. And I know it fits the narrative that the guy who's the best should be the one who wins the round. He's the one who closed the round. He's the one who took over the game. All these terms, it does get overrated. I mean, we ignore who opened the round, who put you in a position to even have a chance at this clutch, who brought you to the finals, who played so well beforehand or killed some people before that you even have a shot at it. We act as if this is somehow less important, but if you don't have that, you can't have the second part. So you could have amazing players like Zipmix and MBK and get right on many teams without some of the other players in their team, some of the big fraggers, some of the good orpers. They'd never be in positions to clutch and therefore they'd be clutched and they wouldn't win shit. So as such, being godlike outside the context of being clutch actually gets underrated bizarrely. So someone like Device, who by the way, funnily enough, as an example, in terms of actual clutches in the game, is actually a pretty good player for a, for a star player in clutches. Like I think Device is actually better in raw 1v1 and 1v2 clutches than Forrest is. But funnily enough, in the other sense of being clutch, closing out a massive match, closing out a final, a huge game, the biggest spotlight... Yeah, he gets wrecked for not being clutch in those big finals. And by the way, it's a legit criticism. I have mentioned it every time I've seen it myself. It's why I originally used to go super hard on him before he leveled up the other aspects of his game. But you know what? The fact he isn't clutch there doesn't make everything else he does not as good. It doesn't mean that he can't even be the best player. The fact he doesn't do that. What if he excels so far in the other elements that that makes him better overall? I'm not saying he does, by the way, but I'm saying it's certainly hypothetically possible, and he's certainly better than, quite frankly, some pretty clutch players. Like, he is a much greater player in history and year on year than Fallen, but Fallen is a significantly better clutch player in terms of performing in the big finals and the biggest games, and at the end of a match going overtime, I'd take Fallen every day of the week. Problem is, would I take Fallen instead of Device? How am I going to divide up the team? What roles are they going to play? This is the key where we're going to have to analyze this and break it down. Because how does Device get those superstar numbers at these massive tournaments if he's not clutching big finals? Because by the way, he's not. Well, I'll tell you how he does it. He's fucking amazing through all the rest of the tournament. And by the way, against all opponents, he can play SK Gaming in the group stage of a tournament. He'll be straight fire. I've seen him do it many times, E-League Major. But if he goes to the finals, yeah, maybe he'll have a breakdown. Maybe he'll have a collapse. Funnily enough, it's not even about necessarily only in the big moments because actually I know Device in his past used to break down at the semi-finals, but if you look after that to the era when his team makes the finals, so in TSM and now in Astralis, this guy is actually a very good player in semi-finals. You see a lot of big semi-finals that he was amazing in. It just then he got to the finals. So actually he kind of fucked himself, right? By being so good in the semis, he gets himself to some of the finals where he then fails and people go, you are fucking shit and are not clutch. You clearly have a mark against your greatness. And sure, he does to a degree, but not maybe to the degree they're writing him off. Now, funnily enough, there's another player this reminds me of who's a truly great player and is remembered as one of the great clutch players in basketball for the same reasons. And that is Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant, in many of his NBA runs where he went deep, would be godlike in the, in the Western Conference Final, the round just before, the playoff round just before the final. If you look at Western Conference Final players, he's got to be one of the top five of all time. Utterly unreal, smashed, oftentimes the best team in the league because the best teams were often in the West in his time. The Spurs, the Nuggets, so many good teams, the Trail Blazers, obviously the Kings. But you know what? When he would get to the finals, not only wasn't he as good, he would actually shift the focus away from him. The team would play through Shaq because they often had dominant matchups at the center. And actually, in general, Kobe's never gone super ham in finals. He was very good towards the end of his career, but even then in finals, it's not like he was dropping you know, 50-point games or anything nuts like that. No, he, he wouldn't do something. Like that. He actually seemed to be a little bit more limited in the final, a little bit more stressed. But he was totally amazing. Likewise, in hockey, perhaps the best player of the last 15 years, Sidney Crosby. 
I've actually always found him quite underwhelming when he got to the finals, quite frankly. He's amazing everywhere else. He's so unreal elsewhere that he has all the numbers and he has all the plaudits and he has all the praise and he is a truly great player. In actual finals, you don't really see him scoring that many goals, really. It's not really his sort of thing. He'll have to focus elsewhere, play defense, whatever it might be. So funnily enough, even within a round itself, there's a logic to where things get overrated or underrated. So obviously, winning the 1v1 at the end of a round is massively overrated. Like, it's very, very good. You need someone who can do these things. But you don't even have to win 1v1s to win a game. It's not even the deciding factor in every game. Likewise, there's certain scenarios that get you to the point where you're in a proper gun round 1v1 that if you ignore and you make out that they're not a big deal, you won't get to them. So a famous thing that people often said about Device earlier in his career, when he had a lot more haters before he won the major, before he won massive championships in TSM, is they would say, ah, he gets those numbers, Thorin, because he's just racking up eco frags, isn't he? First of all, I actually think eco frags don't exist generally in the same way in CSGO as they do in 1.6. In 1.6, if you're CT and you're playing a great position with a rifle and armor and nades, and they run at you on an eco, oftentimes they have pure glocks and you just spray them all down. And it's just about how fast can you spray them all down before either you get the three, four, five, or they kill you after you get three or four, then someone's definitely gonna kill them when they've got half health and they've just got a gun and no armor. And you know, it's almost, it's very unlikely you're gonna lose these. Sure, sometimes they might have a deagle, in which case they have a couple of shots at it, they have a puncher's chance, but they're probably still gonna miss. You're still very good, you stick a move. You couldn't really fire a weapon like the deagle while moving, so at least that equalizes it. But you know what? There aren't the same type of eco frags in CSGO. Like actually being able to clean up what seem like eco frags, which nowadays means you at least probably get a P250 oftentimes or a Tech 9, whatever it might be. Being able to clean up those rounds to do them very efficiently without taking much damage or dying is massive. Because when you do that, it stops your economy getting trimmed away. You know when you go on an eco round and you get three kills and you take away a gun that they can't save, you go, fuck, that was a good eco round. Well, they won the eco round technically someone got the kills by the end of the round, would it not have been better for someone on their team to have gotten four kills and then maybe one guy dies and they pick up his op? That'd be way better, right? So actually, it's quite important in CSGO for your economy to be good at eco rounds. So funnily enough, you don't want them to be able to trim your, e your economy and then to have the one round where they do a force buy because they've got money from killing you with the higher bonuses in CSGO and you've lost guns, so you're trimming your economy. And now if they win that force buy, suddenly they crack the whole game wide open. So actually being able to clean up those eco frags or save round kills suddenly actually ensures that your team now keeps its role going, that you can play as a great front runner, or you can play with a lead, and you can keep building it. And you're not having to worry about being snapped back by a phase or some team of that ilk over and over again. Now, funnily enough, Cold Zero is amazing at that. He is really fucking good. He plays very, very seriously against Ecos, and he really knows how to mop them up completely and make it not a danger, as is Device, by the way, someone who does that. Now, funnily enough, certainly someone like Device, someone like Nico, I mean, Nico to a lesser degree than Device, I'd argue, does need probably to improve this quality of being a bit more clutch, as in performing late in tournaments, if he wants to be considered as good as or better than Cold Zero. Because Cold Zero is so good in so many other areas that when you add this factor in as well, yeah, it is tough to see how those other guys can beat him. Sure, in one area they might beat him, two areas they might beat him. But for the whole package, when you add in being amazing, having the numbers, making the finals, winning the tournaments, and being clutch, yeah, it does kind of put him over the top, right? But that's a very extreme example. And that's also not a diss to Nico. That's because they're battling for best in the world, and perhaps in some of their cases, best to ever play. So once you get to best person to ever play a game, yes, you better have a lot of the qualities maxed out or be so unreal in some of them that you can overcome them. Hence why I said before, it's not over for some of these players, whether they become clutch players or not. Now, funnily enough, being clutch in a round, right, well, here's the thing. Zipnix can close you rounds, but you know what he can't do? Be the main carry or the main orper, carry you in massive frags, get you to the point where he could clutch around and then do it. I mean, Kirby finished the E-League Major, but what's the reason they made the E-League Major final? Because Device was the best player in the tournament before the final. He's a group stage monster, Swiss system, he took care of Na'Vi in the quarterfinals. He took care of Fnatic in the semifinals. That would have been a three-map series without Device. You never look at one factor and say, that one is solely the most important. Since it's more important than others, which you can say, certainly if that's your bias, you can say, I choose this to be better. I, by the way, I choose Clutch Factor as normally better than a lot of the others. But that doesn't mean I ignore the others. That doesn't mean that this, now, if you're better in Clutch, you're always going to be better than the others. No, of course not. It's a blend of them. Carl Malone, as I said, never won an NBA title. Played power forward. You know what? He is a much greater player than Draymond Green of the, of the Golden State Warriors, who has two titles. Doesn't matter. Carmelo is significantly greater. Draymond Green can never do what Carmelo did. 
different components of a team also come into play here. Because actually in most teams, very rare you ever get a team that are all clutch or a team that are all not clutch. Typically, you get a balance of clutch and non-clutch players. And actually, that's because different skill sets suit different roles and styles. And therefore, you blend those together to make an overall style that hopefully makes you well-rounded. That's what you want from a team. Because what are the odds, right, that a really good clutch player is also going to be a great in-game leader? Okay. You might say, well, I already know Thorin. Fallen. Right. First of all, Fallen's an outlier to be like that. Secondly, yeah, he's a great clutch player, great in-game leader. Is he a great fragger? I wouldn't really say so, because we're talking about great here, like best to ever do those types of categories, right? No, he's a pretty good fragger. He's above average fragger. If he had his own team and he wasn't in-game leader, I think he probably could maybe come on this territory as an AWPer. But no, in the context that he's the other two, he's not a great fragger. Is he a great teammate? Okay, maybe he is in some senses, but is he a great player at following up on frags or killing eco frags? See what I mean? There's so much to being a great player that actually you want players who collectively cover all these categories but you're not necessarily going to have it all in one player, nor do you need it all to be a real superstar. If you can, that would be amazing. But quite frankly, by the way, the reason why Cold Zero is a great example is I told you before, Forrest wasn't a great clutch player. I told you before, Nico is a good clutch player, actually in 1vx rounds, but he's not that great in finals, and especially not in finals against SK. But you know what? Cold Zero will never have the skill and insane fragging power of Nico. Now, I know what you mean, but they're going to say already, yeah, but he can get the numbers. That's different. That's more to do with playing style. Fragging power isn't literally just the frags you can get. It's the power you have to get those frags. Cold Zero's brain allows him to get frags. Nico wouldn't, but Nico can get kills fra that Cold Zero couldn't. That might sound very difficult to understand, but I'll put it this way. If you ever see Cold Zero play in a team that it doesn't have Fallen and Fur in it, you will probably very quickly find out what I mean by that. So, as I said, different components, because it's not essential to have this clutch factor, even though, yes, it is very significant when you see it, and obviously you will remember it. It's a crazy kind of highlight to have, right? It's also a factor I think you need to point out that having the right blend can actually transfer to players who aren't this particular quality some elements of that quality. So you see it with confidence players. Some teams that play around confidence, they have their star player going off. Yeah, you know what? The little role player starts to get puff his chest out. Hey, I can do this shit. I can fucking get some entry frags here. Yeah, give me a high five. Woo, they get into it, right? Put them on another team. They might collapse completely. Likewise with clutch players. When you have a team that has Cold Zero, Fallen, right? I wouldn't say Fur's a super good clutch player, but you know what? All of a sudden, someone like Taco starts to get way more clutch, right? He seems a lot better. I saw him in the Games Academy. I didn't see any of this shit. He wasn't doing any of this stuff. But you know what? In a team where he knows all the rest's covered, everyone's doing nothing else, he's doing his job already. Now he feels freed up. Hey, I can, I can get some of these ones. I can have a bit of confidence. Hey, I'm a champion as well. He starts to do these things. I think a team like SK takes on Fallen and Cold's personality. Their DNA gets built into them. And the existence of those players almost has an aura that elevates their teammates. Funnily enough, another topic I'll talk about in a video is that I do think teams take on the mentalities of leaders or star players or key figures within their team. So yes, being clutch is a great, great quality to have. Great players who have it will naturally be considered some of the best of all time. It doesn't automatically make you the best though. It's not the one factor that supersedes all other. It is one among many. And in a team, you typically need all the factors to be covered to some degree.